Hello everyone, this is Stanpai, and today I am incredibly honored to have a very special guest here for an incredible interview all about well, his life, his legend, and everything in between. So, I am here with Van Darkholm, the one and only. So, Van, in your own words, though you need no introduction, please, who are you? Who is Van Darkholm? Hi, Stanpai. Well, thank you so much for, uh, for this interview. I'm really louder that you asked me, but uh, my name is Van. As you all know, I'm an artist, a performance artist. <laughs> Fantastic. So Van, uh, you're here to talk about, like I said, just a little bit of everything from your career, how it got started into the Gachi Muchi and the community that has embraced you so much and a little bit of what you're doing online. So let's, uh, let's dive right into it. Just how real quick how did you turn your interest in adult entertainment into a career how did that start for you well it, it wasn't it wasn't a, it wasn't planned i mean i was just trying to make a living i was just trying to you know trying to make rent um uh, and uh it's basically that i know it's not for everyone everyone is different for me i can't do the nine to five thing climbing the corporate ladder i'm more like i get up at noon as you can see our interviews at 2 a uh, 2 in the afternoon that's when i'm mostly awake uh i go to bed like around two or three in the morning that's my schedule and it doesn't fit the the conventional and uh, the lifestyle um and for me it's like you know i make a couple of videos i um I made enough money for rent, and I just work out and just enjoy life. That's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, we'll talk a little bit now about your approach to art. And, and as an artist, you know, what does it mean to be an artist? What does your work mean to you? Because you've been involved with shibari and, and other, you know, different ways of using human beings creatively for, for that art form. So um, I guess what does your art mean to you, and, and how did you get started with that? It's always like, you know, roughly looking guys um, in a dirty, dark, dingy dungeon. <laughs> and not a lot of people can relate to that. So, uh, you know, for me, it's always like, oh, a jock or somebody like a boy next door. Hey, he said, it. I couldn't believe he said it, yeah, boy yeah. next door. Um, it's a Twitch joke. Yeah, um, yeah. No, I, I guarantee you, everybody watching this, they know it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, so that that's why I want to make I want to make um, bondage that's accessible accessible to everyone. BDSM that you know people look at it and go, oh, it's not gross. It's actually kind of pretty. It's kind of hot. So that was my pitch to uh, Peter Ackworth uh, at Kink.com when I saw him, you know, when I had a meeting with him and I wanted to make it so, you know, everybody can, you know, look at it and go, oh, wow, that's, you know, I'm not really into that stuff, but that looks really sexy. <laughs> and that's, that's, that, that was my mission. And would you say mission accomplished? Uh, I'm, I'm extremely proud of that because when I was for like eight years, I was with Kink since 2008 till 16, 17. Um, if I Google, you know, male shibari or gay bondage or male bondage, it'll be like the first three image page, you know, in the image section, it's all my work. And I'm like, holy shit. And it's from other, you know, like um, Tumblr pages, mm -hmm. people, uh, social media pages, it's coming from there. It's not from us. Right. Um, it's not from our company. And it's just pages and pages of just my work. And I'm going, wow, that's amazing. And then sadly enough, when I left Kink, and, I, and it only lasted for a year. So, you know, like, I think it was like maybe 2018, maybe. I Googled it again, and it's all gone. Oh. So, <laughs> disappeared. <Yeah>. Oh, well. <laughs> that's the nature of the beast. That's the internet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so uh, in that original interview where you say you're an artist, you're a performance artist, you mentioned, you know, you're an artist, you're from Japan, right? My name is Van. I'm... <laughs> I'm from Japan. So can you talk about your connection to Japan and what led you to that line? I mean, all the little pieces. Oh, were... my God. You guys are going to hate me for saying this. 
But the reason that I'm I'm wearing this is um, basically it. I'm trying to like telling myself to um, em- that I am I embrace it now. Mm-hmm. I I accept this now. I hated it for years. Yeah. Because um, back when I'm on top of the world in the BDSM world with with Kink.com, mm-hmm. you know, I'm like the top dom of, in the world. Right. Uh, you know, and to a point where even, you know, like the other gay company, the, the, the vanilla gay companies are like took notice because of the, the kind of business that we we're, were doing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. What I'm saying is they all came and kissed my ass, you know, <laughs> uh, all the other studios that have nothing to do with BDSM. They're all like, come to the, come to the armory. Right. Um, so I was there, but then when I Google me, the first thing that showed up is this goddamn <laughs> YouTube video <laughs> saying that I'm worth three hundred dollars. <laughs> you know that I did ten years ago. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I hated it. Oh my god, <laughs> I hated to a point where I, uh, you know, I because I had my bondage gear and stuff at Kink, where at the end I, I just took that that hood. And I said, I, oh, I just threw it across the floor. Oh, man. Uh, the, the room, and I said, I told to my PA, you know, get rid of that fucking mask. I don't <laughs> want to see that fucking mask. Uh, that's how much I hated it. Oh, wow. Because it's just all this and right. has nothing to do with my war, right. you know, with King.com. Yeah. Um, so, so that's why. Uh, but on the video, go back to the video. I just did it as a, um, you know, to help a friend out. I'm not going to mention his name, but he's one of the producers for this 101, 101 Rent Boy kind uh-huh. of thing. And he came to me and he's like, oh, come on. We need your help. We don't have anybody like. I said, there's tons of them. Leave, <laughs> me, leave me the fuck alone. Uh, you know, I, I threw out some names, you know, the pe- you know who the other guys Anybody are else. in town. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, we want you, you know. Um, so I said, well, I'll go on there if, um, if, I, if I put a hood on and uh, pretend like I'm somebody else. Right. And they say, fine, fine. We just need a BDSM guy. <laughs> So that's what it is. I try to like go on there. I try to change voice. If you listen to my voice, it's kind of a little slutty, a little like really, uh, I don't know. It just sounds different. Yeah, yeah. And I threw my voice and I also say I'm from Japan because, you know, I love the Shibari. Yeah, I, yeah. I really like really identify with the Japanese culture. I love the samurai and, the, you know, um, uh, Mishima and you know um, all you know all the other artists and stuff. So I'm really identified with that. So I said I'm from Japan. I'm right. Like, gonna throw you guys, fool you, fool you. Uh, but I guess it didn't work because because <laughs> it's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> because that's who. It's, so that, you know, for like a decade, over a decade, I'm known for this goddamn thing, <laughs> and I hate it. I not stand it. Um. So, uh, I mean, until I went to uh, China last year. Right. And to meet those peep kids, I say kids, they're like 20 something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, up close, it's, it kind of really, you know, it was really emotional for me. You know, mm-hmm. they, 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 they stood in line for hours. Yeah. Some of them flew in from other countries, you know, surrounding countries like Singapore and uh, Vietnam and uh, Korea. Where else are they? Because they told me, it's like, we flew in right, right. last night just for you. And I'm blown by it. And they, you know, they're telling me how uh, these videos uh, kind of help them through, you know, their their childhood mm-hmm. or, you know, when they go into college or yeah, high yeah. school or grade school, how they just kind of, you know, because it's really stressful, you know. Yeah. I remember it was stressful growing up, and just to have something to giggle as or to you exactly. know, to keep your mind off of it, and <laughs> say, "Oh, thank you so much," you know, you know, I'm I'm an engineer now at so and so corporation, but I just want to come here and just to say thank you, you know, yeah. just to tell me thank you, and I'm like, "Oh my god, 
fine in a minute. I have no idea this was going on. Right. No, until I, yeah. <laughs> last October. That's awesome. And I, I remember we were all very excited when you made that announcement that you were going to the Sky event because, you know, a lot of us, we didn't, you know, we were like, where's Van? How do we get in touch with Van? How do we get, you know, and, and I'm definitely in the same boat. You know, those videos were just so entertaining and, and life is hard. You know, life is hard for everybody, but it's a good chance to just step away and, and smile, you know? So I'll say yeah. the same thing they did. Thank you, Van, for your part in all of that. Oh. <laughs> that's why we're here having this conversation because that's that's what it's all about. But I think life is funny because it's all an accident. You know, yeah. I didn't plan it to, to do that. I was just doing it just to help some, a friend out. Right. <laughs> and I, just to be honest with you, I just made shit up. Yeah. <laughs> on the fly. Because back then I was, you know, I was doing the, uh, going to uh, acting school. I was mm -hmm. going to acting school, like, I said, once or twice, acting class, once or twice a week. Yeah. Because, you know, I was with a, a modeling agency also. And, you know, they, and they were trying to get me into like commercials and runway and stuff. And, you know, the, the guy said, oh, you got to go take acting class. Right. So I, I used that right. for the video, you know, and then, so now it's like, Oh my God, all that is fake. Oh my God, all that is, well, there's a part of me in it, yeah, but it's, yeah, yeah. you know. It was a character. And it's a, it's a bellish. Yeah. Well, I think we still, what we have is a lot, not a sad, lonely dungeon master, but instead a very you know, warm and, and friendly community icon is what we got. So I think that's the, a, a good outcome in my opinion. <laughs> So, you know, the, you mentioned that a bit about that experience going to China for that event. Can you talk a little bit more about that? There's just what it was like to like find out, you know, hey, we want you to come over here and we want you to meet all these fans and, and be a part of this because of all this gachi moochies. What was that like for you? Well, to be honest with you, okay, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say, oh, because, I'm, you know, that's one thing with me on Twitch is that I tell the truth. Yeah. I'm not going to bullshit people. Uh, the, the reason that I went there is I didn't want to go in, in the first place. I told the, I could show you the email, <laughs> the correspondent. It's like to, to prove that I, I'm not lying to you guys. Is I say I'm too old for this shit. I don't want to, you know, you know. I bought a farm. You yeah. know, literally bought a farm, and you know that thing is behind me. I, you know, I'm, I'm happy. Um, but then, you know, he, he's, he's really, you know, the producer is really smart. I mean, he's like, oh, I read on your blog somewhere that you're trying to raise money for your camp. And they go, well, here's how about this much? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going, holy shit. Okay, I'm there. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Money talks. And, but the right? thing is, all right. The thing is, but that when I went, it changed me completely. Right. It, it made me see things totally different. And I appreciate every single, you know, it's like, it's like, I hear you mm -hmm. now, like all these years, I get these email, you know, and it's just like little whisperings, a distant right. whisper somewhere that I really did not connect. But when I went there and it's like, it hit me, it's like, okay, I got it now. I hear you now. This is um, real. It's not just little ghosts this is in the past. Yeah, and especially when people come up to me and just just want to hug me, you know, right. and and it's like, wow, okay. <laughs> um, and uh, and then they they like, you know, uh, I said, what do you want me to do on stage, you know? And the producer's like, say these lines. And yeah, like, yeah. Ooh, turn your tongues around. And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck is he talking about? Yeah. It's like. What, what did you talk? And then he showed me the video. <laughs> you don't even remember. <laughs> it's like, holy crap. I did that like for 10 minutes yeah. for Kink as a favor. You know, I completely forgot all about yeah. it. <laughs> and he's like, oh, you be, okay, okay. <laughs> and then and I think, and I say, well, everybody knows it all. It's famous. <laughs> and I'm like, really? Are you shitting me? So then, uh, uh, then and then I go, okay. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call people up in the audience. So these are like tiny, tiny, like fifteen-year-old Chinese girls, mm -hmm. and you know, like some young kid. I said, "Come on stage! Come on stage!" And okay, 
tell me what's on that on that video and they like repeat it verbatim yeah and it just like it, it's like are you kidding me you guys memorize that yeah um and some of them even like you know like start reciting the this 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 video the whole me. monologue like, the whole thing <laughs> like are you serious and it's you in know? english too so there they are you know they speak a different language they're doing the whole thing in english <laughs> in english yes <laughs> oh man that's crazy yeah. without like without any um pause it they just go right through they practiced <laughs> they had to impress the dungeon master <laughs> i know they didn't even take a break it just went right through there's no the end of a sentence or you know beginning of a sentence it paragraph that's continuous awesome. that's awesome yeah so i mean and i imagine that's kind of different uh you know when you're dealing with fans of adult entertainment like not not gachi Muji, but just the regular fans as well as just the general public how would you ex compare that experience? Because I, I know for some actors and producers, that's one of the harder parts of working in the industry is because it's taboo or, you know, things like that come up and people treat, you know, workers differently. So how would you compare that experience just working in the industry your whole life? I mean, you made it through pretty well, I'd say, but, you know, especially just having seen that side of the world, uh, how would you compare the, the way the world and especially like around America, people treat adult entertainment? Oh, okay. I got your question. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's all hypocrite. You know, they're all a bunch of hypocrites. Uh, you know, I mean, it's virtue signaling everywhere. Right, right. And I'm telling you, when I was doing this, talking about this, and I get like big, big, powerful people in the industry, you know, they go on these... I don't know if you remember these, uh, is it entertainment tonight still around, you know, all these sure. sh talk shows or like, you know, saying, Oh, you know, blah, 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 moral, blah, blah, you know, bitch, you're in my dungeon wearing a ball gag, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I just take it out on them. <laughs> remember you said this on TV the other day, you know, bam. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Can I have another? Wow. So, bunch of hypocrites. Yeah. Oh, I go to these parties, uh, and you couldn't believe it. Like, oh my God, really? Who? That's who's there? And you know, it's like, right, right. You know, and it's like, you know, you see them on the news, and it's all different. Um, but, uh, but the thing is, with my uh, with my uh, fans, is like I discover there's two kinds okay then it's also like a, a an overlap a bleed in between yeah. the, you know a variation in between the two but one is from the bdsm you know they, they saw my stuff you know they want to be a they fantasize about being a slave mm -hmm. it's all about you know uh doing this to me or tying me up for a month man all that kind of stuff and then the other one is the gachi muchi uh people who have, most of them have never seen any of my adult <laughs> right. stuff. They just saw my YouTube stuff, you know, with a baby, you know. That <laughs> yeah, guy is cute, yeah. by the way. What's his name? Oh, yeah. That yeah. you interviewed? Yeah, Akasan, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's cute. Um, <laughs> but that's all they know. Um, so, you know, I mean, so I... Um, like, uh, I... So, I, and then this, yeah, of course, there's some who would, would know both. Right. But that's the two, you know, just the two, the two different kinds groups. of fans. Yeah, two kinds of, and there's there's some would know about my porn stuff, and then some would be the big gachi fan, uh, gachi fan, right, and vice versa. Um, but those are the two main ones, and and I just finally like this year that I realized that I didn't before, mm -hmm. you know, because I have just have the, for for like over two decades, I get email from like, you know. Sir, I love your video on Bound Gods. I wish you do this to me. And here's a picture of my dick. You know, <laughs> or my ass. All right? right? <laughs> so I'm used to that. So that's right. my world. Okay? Just right. imagine that's my world. And then I got like a <laughs> young kid from Japan or something sent me an email saying, Sir, I love your videos, you know, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, I did not relate that to Gachi Buchi. You know, right. I'm like, where is your dick photo? Yeah. <laughs> so that's, 
that's how I realized like, you know, in the in the reg edit, that red that red edit. Yeah, Reddit forum thing. Yeah. Like I I, I just, it just clicked on me because I read, you know, I was pulling Forsen or something like that. Right, right. You know, he has a he's a, he has a channel or something. And one of the one of the posting was like, yeah, I try to reach, you know, he's he, he you know, like something like a we try to reach reach out Van, but he's he's not interested in in it or something like. I did got a hold of him one time, and he just want to follow up my dick. <laughs> Because you didn't know who they were, you got the the whole community mixed up. <laughs> I get them all like, yeah. So, so that's that's why. Because I just so used to getting dick photos. Right. <laughs> so then they start sending me dick photos. Okay. <laughs> so it's like, I loved you. Please watch my YouTube video. We're having a comp international competition of the Gachimuchi Wrestling Festival. Here's a photo of my dick. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> yeah. So they think that uh, that's like a, a requisite. Yeah, right, right. It's like me. the requirement to get in. Yeah. <laughs> that's so, your that's your cover charge. So now I feel bad. You know, I'm making these kids sending me dick photos, right. and I thought it was slaves. Right, right. All these slaves wanting, you know. Yeah. So there's a huge miscommunication. Yeah. So, so China was really where you finally made the jump, though, because that was one of the things I wanted to talk about. It's like what finally made you take that leap. It was that trip to China and seeing how real all of it really is. That's definitely it. So I guess one last question about your work in the adult side of things before we go full into Gachi Muchi. What's your favorite production that you've worked on? A single piece or a single production, if you could pick just one. There are so many. I mean... I did a lot of, um, you know, I mean, even the beginning with my my stuff that I look back, you know, with my own muscle bound production company, it's like, wow, you did that, <laughs> you know. And then uh, in um, on my kink with the bound gods and the thirty minutes of torment, it's a, uh, it's a lot of people. It's like this is beyond porn. This is you know like BDSM, right? you know, um, master class. So I'm proud when I hear that. I mean, it's, it's a series more than a, just one thing. Right. So all those different things together are what really constitute your favorite. It's the, the whole work. Yeah. And, and I, and I don't even like, now that I look back, you try to tell me that I have to like recreate that. I can't, I don't it's, know how I did it's it. It's gone. It left. <laughs> you put it all in the project and that was it. <laughs> yeah, it's gone. It's out and it's done. So you mentioned how much uh, you hated that mask because of that video. And now you're being constantly exposed on your streams to Lords of the Locker Room over and over and over. Hey, buddy, I think you got the wrong door, right? Every day they make you watch this. <laughs> Are you sick of it yet? <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm embracing it. But, the, you know, I mean. I'm just going to make them sick of it themselves. Oh, good luck. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Never I mean, going to happen. Uh, well, my goal is to go on there, um, you know, to entertain, but also uh, just, there's just a lot of noises all over from everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I just want to be there to just, just a, like, have, have somebody to tell the truth. Right, right. Um, not to bullshit them around and stuff. And, uh, you know, I mean, they can go on with, how much is fisting? Is it still $300? You no. Know, What's the answer? They, you know, they can, they can <laughs> spam that. You know, eventually <laughs> someone's going to get tired and it's not yeah. going to be me. <laughs> there you go. So, but, but how much is it? I think they, they definitely want to know. Is it still it's always 300 Always 300 No adjustment yeah. for inflation. Flat rate. <laughs> no, like I said on stage in China, uh, they go, man, it's what's the inflation now? Is it going to be more? And I said, no, it's three hundred bucks because I fucking love it. <laughs> oh man, that's <laughs> so. On the subject of of creating, you already talked about how that came to be, that whole sequence, how that, how you came up with it and made it happen. And, and I've heard you talk about this on stream with Lords of the Locker Room, but. 
it sounds like that was like a perfect storm of, of coincidences. How did that iconic scene happen? How does it turn into such a quotable, delightful piece of art? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I, it could it could have been any other scenes. For some reason, you guys just picked that. You should ask yourself, not me. Right? Why is it funny? Um, yeah. And you just had your leather stuff in the car. That was a coincidence. In my backpack. In your backpack, you just had it with you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so it wasn't part of the script. You just said, "Hey, can I wear this?" <laughs> okay. We- with porn, you just show up, right. and then they just make up for that day. There's no planning. There's no like storyboard. There's no script. You know, you just you just show up and just wing it. That's the porn industry. Right. So there's always been a debate between whether or not he called you Leather Man or Leather Head. Which do you think it is? <laughs> it's been Twenty years ago. I think it was, uh, you know, I mean, he's from Canada, right? Yeah. For some reason, he's, he, he's, uh, you know, we he makes accent, it sound like he's know. from Jersey or something. Yeah, well, you know, I got to throw that around there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's a leather head. Yeah. Because it just kind of go with the jabronis outfit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all that. <laughs> And and we've also heard your opinion of who is in the wrong. As as people on this channel have seen my video already, breaking that whole thing down, who was in the wrong between the two of you. But so in your words, it's two forces. Everybody's in the wrong, huh? Yes, <laughs> that's important. <laughs> well, so can you? Th- I mean, you already said it's kind of up to us to figure out. But why do you think people did fall in love with with all of this stuff? I mean, especially that and those quotes. Like what? Do you, do you think that there's anything special about those specific moments that makes them so memorable? I think, so you have to go back to, you have to trace back to the, the, the Japanese mentality back then. Uh-huh. Uh, why they make this. And what I think is because, okay, they got big uh, muscular guy gen, guy jeans. I don't know how to call them. Yeah, yeah. But then they have one Asian guy in there, <laughs> you know. Not as big, but pretty damn big. Um, <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, uh, you know, we appreciate big, big, big muscle guy. It's kind of funny because Gachi is fat. That's right, right. That's yeah, how yeah. they translate it, right? <clears throat> right. It's usually like the the big thick guys. Yeah, um, and uh, so then you know they go, oh, you know, they have that, but then they also have mm-hmm. that we can relate to, or we can pretend like that's us. Okay, that's a very so, cool interpretation. I mean, Never I thought mean, of it that way. Yeah, uh, so they can, you know, they can, because you know, I mean, uh, back in those days, I mean, I got, I got, I was doing like, um, uh, you know, runway shows and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, like one time, I did one in uh, Tokyo. It's a runway show, and. I, I'm not going to say which company it is, but mm-hmm. I look around and it's like, why is it I'm the only, I, 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 this is back then, I was naive, right. 20 something, you know, like, why am I the only Asian guy doing a runway show in Asia right. and everybody else is like white dude, six foot white dude. And I asked the lady, you know, the one who's uh, running the thing and she's like, hey, because everybody here looks the same and we want to see something oh, different. Wow. And you just keep your mouth shut and yeah. just do your job. Right. Yeah. yeah so back then, you know, um, <laughs> and but then I was, I was trying to say like, well, then that's all they're going to see is that. And they're not going to see, you know, um, as aesthetic or anything. But that's another discussion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's why um, they choose that, you know, that, that scene. I see. Yeah. Especially when you say you're an artist from Japan. <laughs> It helps, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's awesome. So, I mean, you've been you've been working a lot on Twitch lately. You've been streaming like nonstop. Uh, that has become, you know, your full time routine now. Uh, you're just constantly with the community. So, can you talk a little bit about 
about your experience doing live streams and, and how you've made that transition for yourself and just what the overall experience has been like? Well, it's like a miracle, really, because I have no idea, you know, like it was again, everything with my life is an accident, right? You know, I just I, I'm not like meant to do any of that. It's just kind of like, oh, it's an accident. OK, I'm doing it right. You run with it. But my first stream, I have no idea who I'm talking to, what the hell I'm doing. The first six streams, my window is so small and I try to stretch it out in my head. It's like going this way or it's going this way <laughs> right. from the screen. And I always have a black screen on the side. Um, and, you know, and then I have people like, you need this emote, you need this extension. You know, they're all like telling me what to do. And I'm saying, okay, go ahead, go ahead, do, do it, it, do yeah. it. <laughs> you accept it. Um, do whatever you want. But then, you know, I got this uh, amazing uh, team of mods mm -hmm. that, you know, willing to help me out uh, and walk me through it. And I'm telling you, some of the stuff is like, that it's like they're speaking a different language right. to me. And you just let and I'm like, happen. what? I don't. I understand what you're saying. And then they would patiently send me like screen grabs with arrows, <laughs> pointing like what I need to, to to what button I need to push, like you know, like that for me to. Uh, That's awesome. To get to get going. Um, but you know, I'm I'm learning, and they're like, you know, you guys have your own. Get it. And, I don't know any of this language and mm -hmm. uh, it's funny. I get it. It's amusing. Um, uh, and I, like I said you know, on stream before, it's uh, it's very therapeutic for me because I'm in a forest. I don't see other people. Right. I don't talk to other people. And I just have a conversation in my head all the time, like when I'm shoveling, you know, goat, goat shit or hay <laughs> or chopping down trees, I'm having a dialogue in my head. And now it gives me a chance to kind of like just let it out. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Um, release it to the world. And uh, and the funny thing is they're all laughing at it. So I think, you know, it's it's it's, it's a um, symbiotic relationship. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, they're getting something out of it and I'm getting something out of it because, you know, I'm getting like therapy and they're then they're laughing at how stupid i am um <laughs> which is i don't care you, you've made a lifestyle out of just letting people watch and enjoy <laughs> that's it <laughs> <laughs> yep awesome and and you mentioned that you're going to be uh you're working on your youtube channel so what can people expect on youtube well um you know on twitch like your clips get deleted after yeah, yeah. After a certain time, but some of this, I think these are like comedy gold. Some of them, yeah. Gotta... <laughs> <laughs> gotta keep uh, it. So I just kind of, you know, uh, save them. You know, uh, if this fucking video been on the internet for 20 years, uh, <laughs> hopefully my stuff will last yeah. a little longer too. Right, when you finally get to be yourself. <laughs> yes hopefully it will it will flood out this shit you know you can leave and, the hood and then behind. my youtube video will be the first one to show up instead of this guy popping up when you google my name oh, that's, that's my plan that's gonna be tough to beat but i think it might happen just keep it up <laughs> that's, that's so uh, something i saw you post on i think it was on billy billy was the the dark fitness army and i thought that was so cool uh, giving training tips for people to get in shape. So please, can you talk a little bit about that? Cause I would love to see more of that. Well, uh, it's it's funny because when I was there, skinny kids, they're like, they're all just interested in just studying and gaming. And, uh, and you know, they're all like, well, you know, they're at, they ask me like, can, can I work out too? You know, you know, you're still in great shape, you know, can I? And, you know, I came up with Dark Fitness Army trying to uh, get them to work out. And, um, but I'm, I'm doing it in an honest way, not like, you know, like these fucking, I'm getting tired of seeing these fucking bodybuilders yeah. like, you know, jacked up on steroid and tell these kids, you know, like, Oh, you know, you got to do this. Use my thinking, machine. Oh, I'm, I'm going to do this and I'm going to look like that. 
No. And that ain't going to happen. You know, I'm going to tell them the truth. You know, like, you're not going to look like, you know, you're not going to look like these huge bodybuilders, but you can be healthy. Uh, you can, you're not going to join a gym, you know, work out realistically, uh, you know, five, five days a week for an hour because these fuckers don't have jobs. Right. That's all they That's do. That's all they do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys have to go to school. You have, you know, you have homework. You got, you got a little, you know, three hours of gaming. You got to, yeah. so I want to make it realistic for those kids, you know, Hey, do it for half an hour, you know, yeah. get some dumbbells, you know, or I'm going to show you how, you know, if you can make it to the gym, I'll show you how to do it. Right. Um, yeah. that, but then I realized that that kind of translate perfectly over to the Twitch audience. Oh, absolutely. So I'm mm -hmm. like, um, so I'm, you know, I mean, uh, I'm transitioning into like maybe, you know, like maybe one stream per week where I just do, you know, talk about, uh, working out, you know, um, uh, yeah, realistic, realistically, right, right. not not the bullshit thing where, you know, these guys are like that's all they do, right. you know, uh, and trying to get these kids to, to, you can do it too. If I can do it, you can do it too. Look how you know, look how big I am. That's bullshit. <laughs> uh, you know, inspiration talk. You just gotta make yourself to do it. That's not realistic stuff. I'm more, I'm more practical. I'm more realistic. I'm, you know, I'm gonna make it so it's it's workable for people right well that's awesome and, and i mean i checked out the first couple of videos i mean just not to spoil them for anybody who wants to watch them i mean even just the simple advice of you know pick a gym that's close by is like one of those really important tips because yeah it's true like you won't go if it's more than you know 15 minutes away it's inconvenient you won't do it you know little things like that so those are like the legitimate honest good tips and so everyone please take note this man's telling you the truth. He's preaching the, the fitness gospel, whether you want to hear it or not. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, but it, it's more realistic yeah. than ideal. A lot of these bodybuilders want to give you ID. Uh, you know, you know, like these... Um, all these Schwarzenegger wannabes. Yeah, yeah, all these, yeah. You just got to make yourself do it. Inspire yourself. Um. But it's funny because you saw those uh, those Billy Billy uh, fitness videos yeah. because I was talking and you know my Chinese right. fans can understand me, so it's kind of like slow right. and very so you know simple English. Uh, but I would you know I would convert that over to the Twitch crowd later on. Yeah, so you know for a different audience. Yeah, well I, I think that's awesome. Honestly, like. Imagine, just imagine the, the overall positive impact of, of you teaching so many people who are completely, especially those who don't touch, they never touch a weight, they don't do a single push-up, and, but, but when, when Van tells them, they gotta, they gotta do it, they gotta listen, alright, they gotta say, sir, yes, sir, thank you, sir. <laughs> I said, put down that fucking mouse and get your ass off that chair right now. <laughs> thank you, sir. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. So one of the last things I definitely want to touch on, you mentioned it already once in, in this uh, talk is your plans for the retreat. So please tell us about that because I think it is, it's awesome. I think it's great. <laughs> um, well, it, it's all started because, uh, uh have you heard of, uh, Bound in Public, my other site from kink.com? No. Where we go in the public and we created like, you know, BDFs. BDFM, uh, BDSM scenes. And one of the places uh, that uh, my, uh, my crew found is, uh, it's called um, Naughty Pines in uh, Northern California. It's a campsite um, near the Russian River. And I went there and it's beautiful. Oh my God, you know, uh, they have little cabins and they have tent, tent area and they have a main room, the main building where, you know, you can, um, uh, cook and you know there's toilets there and when I went there you know because I'm just like so so stressed off from working and everything but just to be there it's like it's just so relaxing I can't describe it right. um, 
it's like life just kind of slow down it just yeah. stop and you just kind of just breathe you know uh and i always wanted to have that i always wanted to do something like that and here i am you know i have 15 acres of forest land um and you know and i say to myself well you know uh if not now when are you going to do it so i said let's do it you know because it's it's perfect where i am right now to to do something like that because i love you know um just to run a place like that and i'm an hour from charlotte you know just a lot of people go an hour i say bitch get your ass in la go from the lax <laughs> yeah. to west hollywood see how long that takes yeah. you yeah <laughs> You know, oh yeah, you're right. Well, now if you come from Charlotte to where I live, there's no cars. You, yeah, it's no stress. No traffic. You know, you're not in a parking lot trying to get on to a freeway ramp, inch by inch by inch. You know, it's just relaxing drive, and you get to see the beautiful countryside. Yeah. It's the same thing. So um, it's convenient, I yeah. think. Very cool. No, it's so so how can how can we make that a reality? What what needs to happen? I want to I want to I want well, people to know how to get involved with that. Well, what it is is realistically, I mean, I can put my money out to it, but I would never recover it back. <laughs> because, you know, to build something like that, I'll be like 130 by the time I get my investment back. <laughs> right. Uh so then, you know, I hear about this crowdfunding and stuff like that. You know, people would pitch in and uh, try to build something. And I say, oh, that's perfect. If they really wanted it, uh, I can build, you know, make it happen. Everybody going to pitch in and help, um, you know. And I mean, just for my one month on Twitch, I am already have enough funding to build one cabin. Uh, you know, I got six or seven more to go but i you know i mean it it can happen it's already happening and i you know i really really thank you everyone for helping me that's awesome man so that pretty much wraps up all of my main questions i had for you um i want to give you the chance if you want to talk about anything at all that i haven't addressed like please this is this is your show do it (laughs) (laughs) get it out of your brain whatever it is create (laughs) Well, I mean, you know, I mean, that that's my passion right now. That's all I could think of to, to do that. And I really enjoy chatting with, uh, with everyone on Twitch. Uh, but at this point, I think um, being on Twitch, it's more like a marathon, right. I notice, with other streamers. <laughs> and I'm sprinting. Right. The entire time. I got to pace my ass. Yeah. Um, you know, that's the only thing that I, you know, that I noticed and, um, and I'm getting to learn, you know, uh, I'm learning about the community. I know there's, uh, there's people forcing and NIM, uh, Dr. Disrespect and, uh, XQC. See, I'm, I'm, I'm picking it up, you know, train wreck, you know, um, I hope, I hope that I don't make them pissed pissed off at me because (laughs) I do talk trash sometimes, but you know, it's all in good fun. Um, and also too, I can dish it out and I can take it also too. So that's um, the nature of your work. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. So don't be offended guys. It's just all, you know, good fun. And I would love to uh, meet you all and, uh, you know, collaborations, have fun. That's awesome. That's about it. <laughs> that is awesome. Well, Van, thank you so much for taking the time to have this chat with me. Um, it's, I'm so honored that I get to to have this on record that people can hear you and hear about you and and meet the person and and start burying the guy in the hood so that we learn who the real Van is. You know, but they already get to do that also on your Twitch streams. I mean, it's it's really been amazing to to see you really fully embrace the community and I think it's what everybody has always wanted and you know especially you know after you know with that when Billy Harrington passed away it was such an overwhelming loss because he was also really the only person who was so directly involved with fans and 
it's it's nice to have somebody still a part of things you know it's, it's nice to have you here and if only it was sooner we could have had you guys wrestle but <laughs> aside from that you know it would have been really people would have loved i think to just have that opportunity to, to be with it would not be people. pretty you two old guy rolling. <laughs> uh but uh you know i mean it's Things happen the way it is because I was back then, I was just so busy working for Kink. You know, I mean, I was on a conveyor belt. Um, right. So please forgive me. I, you know, I, in another, in a different world. Once again, Van Darkholm, the legendary dungeon master, thank you, sir, for this awesome chance to sit and chat with you. And uh, one last thing, please let everyone know where they can find your stuff online. What should they look up? Van Sama official. Uh, on Twitch or Twitter or YouTube. I didn't have any of this shit a, a month ago. <laughs> now I have five things. Uh, and I couldn't use Van Darkholm. I can't even use Van Sama because they're all taken. Right. So I'm stuck with <laughs> Van Sama. Van so Sama that's... official everywhere. That's that's your handle. Awesome. Yeah. Well, be sure to follow Van Sama Official everywhere possible. Check out the YouTube page once that's up and running, the Twitch channel, the Twitter. Go buy a T-shirt and, of course, I don't know, wrap it up. YouTube. <laughs> YouTube, baby. Get on that YouTube. But once again, Van, thank you so much. Such a privilege to have you here, and I'm, I'm really excited that people are getting the chance to, to get to know you. So thank you. Bye. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Yeah.